I'm joined on Gearbox today by one of my favourite technical friends, Simon Koenig. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Jimmy. Lovely to be here. It's lovely to have you to here to share with us your opinions on this, the PowerSoft X8 amplifier with Dante. It is a bit of a behemoth of an amplifier. I'm talking merely in specs, not in size, even though it's got a bit of weight. But when you hear about what it does, I think it can justify its weight. Yes, and if it is, of course, too heavy, there is always the slightly smaller baby brother, shall we call it? Yeah, baby brother in name only and inputs only. I don't think it's really sacrificing much on its no, output capabilities. No, look, the, uh, this is the X8. The X4 is the baby version, which is exactly half of one of these in height and channel count and uh, pretty much every other regard. Exactly. Now, let's talk output for starters. I mean, this, this thing's seriously heavy. Tell me, tell me I'm getting a dollars dollars per per kilogram if we're to looking kilowatts at, per kilogram if we're putting our system together and we're looking at a two ohm load this thing can put out 5200 watts per channel eight channels into a two ohm load that is a bit over 40 kilowatts out of 40 two rack kilowatts units. of power and we're not talking about a power station we're talking a 2RU audio amplifier it's nuts. It's crazy, and that does go some way to explaining the input power requirements, which are, of course, single, biphase, or three-phase. I do like the idea of biphase. I don't think it's very much used in Australia, but we'll stick to the single and our three-phase option. Single options. or three-phase is and an I option. I think we've got plenty there. Now, re really, really amazingly clever. Um, a, you don't need to tell the amplifier what kind of power you're feeding it. You just give it power and it will figure itself out. It takes little squiggly lines and works out what to do with yeah, them. Yeah, it doesn't even care if your three phase is supplied with no neutral. Oy. It can run leg to leg. Um, and when you run it in three phase mode, it automatically balances the current consumption across the three phases. I don't know how the hell they've done that, but that's amazing engineering to me. I think that's that's one of the what's one of the really divinely wonderful features very about clever this little is that switch it's mode. extremely brainy. Exactly. They're very clever little switch mode power supplies in there. Mm. Now look, on the topic of brains, you can see I've got a wireless router and I've got a laptop and I've got an iPad all sitting here. These things are all things that can talk to the X4 and indeed the X8. Um, for monitoring purposes only, you've got this uh, little iPad app, which you can in fact just push the button on the front and enable a wireless network straight within the device and connect to that with your iPad, which is what this is doing. Um, if you want to go in and do configuration, things like adjusting crossovers, filters, EQ, uh, delay and so on, then you use a laptop, you download the Armonia software from the PowerSoft website, link in via one cat 5 and you've got full control over the amplifier. Exactly, and all the onboard DSPs. And it certainly is a fully capable DSP. Gone are the days of just a little bit of delay, a little bit of equalisation. This is fully featured, multiple stages of equalisation, yeah, multiple this, stages of delay. It has a terrifying number of different kinds of filters. Um, you've got a full matrix mixer, 8x8, eight eight, and you can choose, indeed, whether you want to take 8 analogue, eight AES or eight Dante inputs or a combination of those things. And you can also choose a number of different backup options. If you should lose one of your signal paths, then you've got an option how the amplifier will detect that and how it will react accordingly. It's a really clever cascading option that it's got in here where you can set up basically four different priority levels mm. where we say Dante's first, if something goes wrong, drop to your AES EBU and as a backup we've got analog inputs there as well. The show goes on. Mm. And look, talking of what you can run with this, let's, let's pull out some examples. If you had say, I don't know, some dual 18 inch subs, Eight, in, uh, eight ohms per driver, so it's four ohms per cabinet. Yep. So you could hang two of those off each channel. Yep. So, so eight channels, so that's 16 dual 18 18. inch subs, um, and you're pushing over 2,000 watts into each cabinet. That's probably enough. You could run, you know, a whole line array pretty much <laughs> off this. You could run four sends of wedges and some stereo biamp side fills. Uh, they're there's very little that you couldn't actually run off one of these. And we're still talking, it's only 2RU high. It's 2RU high and it weighs 
I don't know, not March. Less than an AM1600. How many AM1600s do you need I was to doing, make one output channel of this? I was doing some terrible maths earlier and working out that if you dodged up a way of bridging up, we would need pushing 10 AM1600 amplifiers to equal one of the eight channels on this unit. So there's probably a lot of old roadies used to pushing AM1600 amps around. 30, 30 kilograms a piece, so 10 of those is 300 kilos. That would excuse the fact that this little boy here might be a little bit heavy on the iron core. Um, it's still a hell of a lot lighter than the other options. I think this is an absolutely amazing piece of technology. I think it is. It's uh, certainly an interesting step forward and we'll find its uses out there. Definitely.